If you had asked me about a year ago what the craziest build I've ever done is, there'd be a couple of options. Now there's another one. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode three of the RCPC project. I worked with EVGA and Tamiya to bring this project to life. I am so excited to show some very cool and some big updates. If you've been watching videos lately, you've been seeing this thing behind me. Now it's finally ready to show off. It's not completely finished. There are a few items left on my checklist, but for the most part, this is a functioning PC inside an RC semi-truck. Let's get it on the bench so we can get a closer look at it. All right, that is about as wide of an angle as I can give you. Uh, this thing is very long. Uh, it's many squares. I would say it's about, uh, oh, how many squares? About 36 squares long. Um, it's, it's a shipping container. And inside of this, I'm going to show you this now, is a fully functioning PC. All the components were uh, graciously provided by EVGA, 120 mil AIO, uh, which is an all-in-one water-cooled pump uh, unit that cools the CPU, which is a Intel i5, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, all on an X570 Stinger motherboard, 2060 KO graphics card, uh, which happens to fit inside this container. It's pretty incredible. I am really, really uh, pretty chuffed with how everything's coming together on this one. As you can see, it's fully enclosed. Uh, there's nothing showing you anywhere that this is a PC. And that was always my intention. Build an art project that looks like a functioning RC car, which this is, but also make it a PC. Uh, and really the only thing that would lead you to believe that this wasn't just an RC is on the other side of this trailer. So let's swing this around here. This was one of the things I was working on and I wanted to make sure that uh, it's sort of still integrated nicely into the whole look of this trailer. Um, I just kind of built this IO shield here and uh, you can see that's the EVGA E that's built into that there. Some cables coming out of here and I'll explain what those are for in a second. Power button right here and that power button starts up the PC obviously. Uh, that much I've learned about PC construction is that you need a power button. Um, and there is a fan directly behind this and that is part of the all-in-one cooling unit. So there's a fan that pulls air in and you'll notice that not just is there uh, holes here, there are also holes on the sides, the bottom and the top to allow plenty of air to flow into this case. That cooling unit obviously is connected to the motherboard and this AIO is cooling the processor directly on the motherboard. I guess we should actually probably talk about some of the exterior details. Uh, I did a whole paint job scheme on this to make it look like it's been a shipping container for a very long time. It's been shipped all over the world, gotten some tags from some local graffito tag artists. Um, there, uh, Some of them have been attempted to have been covered up. Uh, and uh, the logos for both EVGA and Tamiya are on the shipping container as this, you know, technically this is belonging to them. Uh, so I thought this was kind of a cool look. I'm still working on some of the weathering details, uh, but mostly complete. Swing it around again. On this side, uh, there's a lot more uh, tags. I should probably maybe even that out so there's a few more on the other side as well, but some of them have been covered up. Uh, there's a lot of detailing in the actual paint, like some of it's been stripped away. And there's a little bit of rust detailing that's been started down here as well. There's a lot more to do in terms of that. Uh, but on an exterior level, it's looking pretty awesome. And I'm pretty excited by the prospects of doing some more weathering, some chipping, some rusting. I think there's a lot more potential to make this look even better than I think it already does. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. And the fact that it houses an entire PC 
is a pretty exciting um, concept. And uh, to be able to have this on your desk uh, could be very cool, especially when you pair it with the tractor trailer uh, unit behind me there. And we've already gone over that. If you have not seen all the episodes of RCPC, I'll be sure to put a link up here to the playlist so you can check out all of the stuff that's gone on and gone into uh, this build. All right, so a few more details uh, on the exterior here. Uh, because this is a PC and I want it to be sort of standalone, uh, I've added this little port here on the back and this is an OLED display. This OLED display actually shows all of the details of the PC's stats. So like temperature, RPMs of fans, um, processor load, RAM usage, all of those things are gonna be shown on this tiny little screen. Unfortunately, I broke it when I was installing it. The screen's actually cracked and you can sort of see that crack right there. So it's not absolutely 100% working properly. I'm going to replace that though because I definitely want that and I'm gonna make a little frame, I think, uh, print up a little frame so it looks a little bit better. It's looking a little deep on there and not quite right. So we're gonna redo that. Uh, that'll be done for the final episode. So from the outside, can't really tell that there's a PC in there except for the cables coming out of the front. Um, that's about as hidden as I thought I could make it. And you're probably saying to yourself, that's not gonna be very thermally good. There's nowhere for air to escape and how do you turn it on how do you plug it in these are all very valid questions if you remember from the previous episode i was working on the layout of all of the items inside and while it's not an incredibly clean wiring job it's done and um one of the things that I was working on was placement of fans and placement of the PSU so I could kind of determine where I was going to need to make some cuts. And I'm going to turn the whole unit on its side so you can get a better idea of where some of these things are. Uh, here you can see there is a fan for exhaust. This um, is obviously the rear of the cage and right on this area here where all of these screws are, that's where the GPU is. So the fans are pulling air off of the GPU and, and this fan is working as exhaust to pull that air out. And of course, when it sits on the trailer, you get totally ample airflow. Um, will it work in this configuration just sitting on a desk? Yes-ish. I probably wouldn't suggest it though. Uh, what, I, what I could do though to make that a little bit more airflow friendly is I could make a cut here, here, and here, and then you'd get a lot more air being able to flow outside the back of the case. And that's if you wanted to have this just placed on the ground itself, which is totally doable. Uh, also, when I made these cuts, of course, those are pretty rough sections uh, to be cut out of aluminum plate. So uh, what I wanted to do was make these nice TPU uh, kind of uh, shrouds that kind of cover those uh, cutouts and uh, it just kind of cleans up the whole look. I think it actually looks kind of professional despite me being a top rated amateur. Uh, regardless though, uh, that's how that works. There's the PSU right there. So the switch to turn it on and off and the plug to plug it into the wall. And that's basically it. That's the PC in a box. And this is me in a box of emotion. So this shroud here is my final rendition of what I had shown off in the previous episode. I had done a couple of uh, variations on this and uh, was finally happy with this one. Uh, printed this on my Prusa um, in uh, this silver color. I am going to weather this, I think. I'm going to give it a bit of a dusting, uh, maybe a wash, uh, maybe a little bit of rust just to kind of help it match the rest of the trailer uh, container so it doesn't look so brand new. Um, but yeah, I just kind of wanted to give it sort of a, a look and it's sort of similar to some things that you would see on an actual um, container with a refrigeration unit. It's not perfect and it should be recessed, but you know what, um, for the sake of making sure I had enough airflow, this was the best way to go. Now, these two cables here, uh, you've got an HDMI cable and a uh, USB mini. Uh, these are to power the display, and the display is mounted on the actual semi-truck. Uh, this was the best way to get power and video to that unit 
uh, and also kind of keeping it kind of scale, right? Because, I mean, trucks often have a bunch of cables connecting the trailer to the cab, and I thought that kind of looked kind of cool. So that's what I went with there. Um, otherwise, this is a completed PC, and I've already posted it. I know it works. I've got Windows installed on it. I haven't installed any games or any uh, software beside that yet. That's for a later episode where Josh and I actually get to play with these, which should be coming soon. I am looking forward to doing that. I actually, I'm so, again, really, really pleased with my decision to go with this container unit because it is modular. You could move this around. You could take this with you. You don't need the trailer to have a PC. You could just leave this on your desk. Uh, or your workshop, or wherever it kind of was cool to have a container. <laughs> anyway, let's get it all mounted up and uh, plugged in. So, as you can see here, not exactly the um, biggest amount of space to show you how this thing works, uh, but, um, you know, you deal with what you got. Anyway, I built this really nice uh, sort of shroud here for that 5-inch display. Uh, 3D printed this as well on the Prusa, and the screen is right there. That's where the cables connect underneath there, and let's power it up. Of course, this is upside down right now because that's the screen orientation, but Windows, I've got that fixed. And there we go. Functioning Windows PC. Where's my mouse and keyboard? Let's just uh, load this up. It says RCPC, welcome. Uh, it's not the biggest screen, 800 by 600 or so, uh, but as you can see, it's working. This is a fully functioning PC in a container. And uh, I can feel the air flowing through it, which is just amazing. I'm so excited about this. Uh, let's uh, finish that setup later. Anyway, there you go. That's the uh, display. Uh, let's just show you that um, Wi-Fi works. Let's load up a website here. Let's try the scalebuildersguild.com. And we have the internet. So cool. I can't believe this thing is working. Hey, look at that, Google Ads. Anyway, there's the forum running. In this tiny little window uh, this is just awesome I'm so chuffed uh, if you wanted to you can also see I've got NZXT cam running here so we can see some of the uh, stats of this system anyway everything's up and running it's working great and uh, I guess the next step really is to um, load some games on this and start playing some games uh, what do you think I should start with games wise there are a lot of truck and car themed games out there uh let me know uh, in the comments down below what you think i should start with what you think our benchmarks should be josh and i and uh we'll start getting some stuff loaded on here and um playing some games uh we've got a bunch of challenges to go along with this because this wouldn't be an rc challenge if there wasn't an rc truck element to this challenge so Josh and I will be putting the trucks with the trailers attached through a series of tests uh, to test our driving ability, of which there may not be much. Never had a big rig. There's a lot of real estate here and a lot more steering and thinking about that steering that goes into it. Uh, I am definitely looking forward for that, and I hope that you will stay tuned to see that. And if you like this video, you like this sort of weird, crazy content that we're doing, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Thank you so much for watching. See you again soon. <laughs>